different avenues of resources that you may have. And if you connect it with people that work in mental health, then you can get them help. You can call the cops and say, hey, look, I got somebody here that have mental issues. I talked to Dr. Hooper, can you, can you transport them to where they need to be? It's more beneficial for the state, for the city, the county parish, and the state to get them to a mental health facility versus locking them up in jail. Because the jail can't help them because they still gonna have that, those mental issues. Because when they hear voices in their head, they're not gonna know to take medicine. They're not gonna know to eat. They're not gonna know they use the bathroom on themselves. They're not gonna know to shake. We all know to do those things. Because we're not right mind, even when we seek, we know to do those things. But when your mind is, is messed up, whether it's a chemical imbalance, and now we have a lot of veterans that have seen war, they, when you see people dying and see people getting killed and you doing it, huh. then it messes with you. And I've been a nurse 37 years. And I have patients that die. It affects me. Mm -hmm. It affects me. So, yes, sir. You, you may not have all the answers, but you can have resources. I used to think it was fake. No, sir, it's not. It's real. I really thought it was fake. It's you, know what happened. you know that, in, can I say this? In this last day and age, I'm, I'm glad I came to hear this because it behooves us to have people who are qualified to talk to us. Because even though you may can give him a card to get some help, but in the meantime, how do you deal with it until you need to have some some ideas Absolutely. Absolutely. from someone who can say this is what you should do if a person is acting in this particular way? At least a couple of brothers could coach him out and talk to him, right. and then we can get help if it was something that was needed. If this person persists coming, sometimes they leave, you'll never see him again. Right. But in the meantime, if not, and if they're coming to your church on a consistent basis, we need to say, okay, now we need to get this person some help. Absolutely. And then talk to someone and say, this person needs to be seen by someone. But if we don't have that what to do, then we let things kind of slip through the through the, through the, through the great grapevine sometimes. And can, can I say one thing to figure out what they said? And that's why the world thinks the church is failing. Because they have needs and we can't meet their needs. Mm -hmm. And it's on a case by case basis. But if we, don't, we can't get the leadership the pastors and the deacons and the elders to realize that this mental health is real, then nothing ever, is, is, ever else is going to get done. Yes. Because you can have someone that's in the church, but if if we don't recognize or if the pastor don't recognize it, they're not going to authorize it. And this is the, the, the I want you to understand the gravity of your, your office as a deacon. It's, it's, it's even to the point of I'm not a deacon yet, I'm a brother. You, sir, you as a brother. You have an important job and men want to men want to he want to have something to do huh. you know women want they love the lord but a man is he's part of his mindset is give me something to do and i'm telling you brother we got we got a whole lot to do as men in the church and the, the, what i'm what i'm leading to is while we have these as, as, as deacon davis was saying we want to get them to the proper help but Wednesday night when I'm going to Bible class <laughs> and now you meet me in the parking lot, I got to deal with this <laughs> that's, right that's here right, and that's right, right, right now. That's right. Right. And I'm telling you, the one that has never failed us all these millennia is God. And he won't fail you. You That, that scripture talks about that deacon. You have to hold this mystery in confidence. You got to know God is in. Yeah, this man is coming to you and his mind is in. He ain't right and so forth. The same God that gave <laughs> Long story short, man walked in the church, and he was the type of fellow that was mentally, severely mentally ill. Bishop Matthew would start preaching a message like, not fake. And I'm like, I thought it was fake. But he wasn't so much at telling the man he was a, he was a, 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 just a big fake as much as you can hear God in that state of mind that you in. That's right. Now, this is the God we serve. Yes, he's mentally ill. Yes, he's mentally incapacitated. He can hear God in that state. And if we will just say what God tells us to say at the right time, and just be a man that's willing to, to, to do whatever the Lord tells you, God can get through to that mentally ill mind. Even if it takes, you got to rebuke him right there where he stands. And trust that the name of Jesus still has his power. Because while that, 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 that Sheriff uh, Clark on CNN said, the crime is only going to take a few seconds. It's going to take the police a few minutes to get here. I need something to help me now. Right. Now, Jesus is the now God. When we live the way he wants us to live, he's going to help us, brother. 
And I, I don't doubt God, but I'm saying at the same time, we need to be prepared. We need to know what the what the, the different courses of action are available to us and, and not just uh, walk in, I trust the Lord, I trust the Lord. I don't have to do nothing but trust the Lord. Yes, trust the Lord, but be ready to talk with this man. You 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 engaged him, you spoke with him, you had to you converse with him. You learn how to talk with the person that's having this, these issues and understand this is a person, you know, and not get out of here. You, this is a human being, and you can work with them, and God can tell you what to say to get through to that mind. One fellow come on to us, he was having a tent revival, and God said, Don't talk to the devil, talk to that man. And uh, he was demon possessed. He was demon possessed. He was out of there, lit y'all. And so I told, and the, my 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 thing was, I'm gonna I'm gonna contend with this demon and cast him out. But God said, don't don't deal with that demon. Talk to that man. And I start talking. Said, you know why you came here? You came here because you know you need prayer. He just broke that. I ain't seen nothing like that. You hear of that, but that man broke down and started crying like a little boy. I said, come on, let's go to all the altar. Now they haven't, this is testimony service. Man, they going. Here we come walking down the aisle. <laughs> and they wonder, what is, what is he doing? This ain't prayer service. But he came up to the altar and knelt down. On in front of the pulpit. The Shabala, the Shabala, no, the Shabala, you stay, stay still. The Shabala came down and began to pray for that man. That devil, when he was being prayed for, he was screaming, oh, when he touching me, I feel pain. Holy Ghost, brother, we cannot lose our confidence in the power of the Holy Ghost. See, and, and I, I know that there are doctors that know how to deal with this thing, but this is a, this is a, it is a chemical imbalance in the brain. It is many medicines that help that, and medical science is phenomenal. They gave me a colon dissection a couple of years ago, and I thank God for what He's taught these medical doctors. Thank you, Jesus. But at the same time, had God not kept me alive. All that time while I was walking around with a diseased colon, I, the doctor was amazed. Why is he not dead? How could he live like this all this time with this diseased colon? It was the Lord yeah. that brought me. He's still able to help that mentally ill. All these challenges that we as watchmen will face, he's still able to help us with this thing. But my, my point is, don't, don't forget about the Lord. Yes, get to, these, get, to these, get to these professionals, do what you can, but often as you as watchmen are going to face situations where I came down 911, I got to handle this right now. And he's a right now God. But the, the back to the scriptures, uh, if, if, you, if some of you will go to Isaiah 21, I'm going to try to get this out before we, we run out of time. And I know it ain't gonna, we ain't going to finish it, but I want you as brethren to know the challenges we face in the church as watchmen the 21st chapter of Isaiah this is how it, it, is, it is fulfilled in Daniel All right, if y'all will, will read from your Bibles verse 1 and 2 of the 21st chapter of Daniel of, of Isaiah I'm going to give you an interpretation from the 5th chapter of Daniel y'all read aloud verses 1 and 2 of the 21st chapter of Isaiah and I'll show you what's going on alright if you, if, you, if you don't mind go ahead and start the burden, burden of the desert of the sea, as whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it coming from the desert, from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me. Treacherous dealer, dealer treacherous, and the small of the small. All right, all right, then. A treacherous uh, dealer, dealer treacherously, and the spoil of spoil. What's going on that the that the scholars don't get is Daniel speaking about Belshazzar to come some 150 years later. He is taking the vessels of the Lord to come out of the temple of God. He's having a great feast and he's taking those vessels and he's saying, fill them up with wine and all my party goers, they're going to drink wine from the vessels of the temple of the Lord. He's treacherous because his father left him with a testimony. Who was his father? Never Jadnezzar, who told him, son, this God that these Jews worship, this is God. He's the, he, he's the leader of the armies of heaven. But his son didn't hear his testimony. He's, go, he's so wicked. He's instead of hearkening, Daniel's going to preach to him before he dies that night. Daniel's going to preach to him. So he's taking out these vessels. He's treacherous. He 
the spoils that they've gotten from that war of, of, of ravaging Jerusalem, now he's taking the spoils and he's spoiling them. He's corrupting the vessels that belong to the temple. That's what it means, he's spoiling them. All right, go on and read in 21 of uh, chapter of Isaiah. Go up, he will. He dealt treasurely, he spoiled, the spoiler, spoiler. What does it say after that? Go up, O Elam, the seas of Media. All right, all go sun. up, O Elam. The siege, media, Elam is talking about the people of Persia. Media is talking about the Medes. Mm -hmm. All right. So now Isaiah, 150 years before it happens, is talking about his two armies going to come against you. The Elamites, which is the people of Persia, and the people of Media, which is the Medes. Babylon was invaded by the Persians and the Medes. Isaiah dies and goes home to be with the Lord. He doesn't live to see it. But he prophesied this was going to happen. And it comes to pass in the book of Daniel. All right, go on further in that, that 21st chapter of, uh, of, of Isaiah. All the signs and the names of seats. All the signs of names of seats. They have the banquet. And you know, you can be so full of pleasure. You ever ate, you ate so much that you sit down and you're like, ooh, <laughs> when it's so good, you just, you just, oh, they're having such luscious pleasure. But God's fixing to take all that sighing away. All that pleasure is going to be removed. Keep, keep, keep going. Therefore, Therefore on my lungs, filled with pain, pains have I taken over my life. As the pains of a woman that travail, I bow down to hear and appear. I was dismayed at the season. All right. Verse 6 of the fifth chapter of Daniel. Listen to this. This is verse 6 of the fifth chapter of Daniel. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against the other. And the hand came out and began to write on the wall, many, many temples. Uh, uh, I you farce You farce And that hand wrote, and when that king saw that he wrote there, they drinking and party and everything, a hand come out of nowhere and start writing on the wall. <laughs> His joints of his loins were loose. The king, I believe, urinated on himself in front of all his guests. But what is Isaiah feeling 150 years before it comes to pass? Pains in, in, his, in his loins, he said. I feel pain. See, I ain't trying to get mad at nobody. But a lot of these YouTube prophets are talking about, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. That's a prophet. God will let you feel what's hmm. going on in the life of that person that's fixing to experience this even though it's 150 years later. Yes. And Isaiah feels that pain <clears throat> when it says the truth.